Hello and welcome to the Thy Kingdom Come 2022 launch webinar. We're really pleased to be with you today. We're really excited to share our plans and our new resources with you. But before we do anything else, we all, I am sure, have been incredibly affected by what is going on in the world. And I'm sure many of you, like myself, have been praying fervently for the people in Ukraine. And Kemi, my colleague now, is going to lead us in a time of prayer. Thank you. Okay. If you'd like to join with me, the prayer should be on the screen. It's a prayer from the Methodist Church of Great Britain. And it's a prayer for the people of Ukraine, Russia, and for world leaders. Holy and gracious God, we pray for the people of Ukraine and the people of Russia, for their countries and their leaders. We pray for all those who are afraid that your everlasting arms hold them in this time of great fear. We pray for all those who have the power over life and death, that they will choose for all people life and life in all its forms. We pray for those who choose war, that they will remember that you direct your people to turn swords into plowshares and to seek peace. We pray for leaders on the world stage, that they are inspired by the wisdom and courage of Christ. Above all, Lord, today we pray for peace in Ukraine. And we ask this in the name of your blessed son, Jesus. Lord have mercy. Amen. And we're just going to take a moment or two just to be silent and um, to hold Ukraine and the people of Ukraine and Russia um, in our prayers. Thank you, Kemi. Um, a few weeks ago, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby, recorded a message for today's webinar. Obviously, if it had been recorded in the last week, it would reflect the current ongoing situation. But as I say, it was recorded a few weeks ago, and we'd like to share with you now this wonderful message from Archbishop Justin. For centuries, in the days between Ascension and Pentecost, it has been the habit of Christians to make the focus of our prayers the same as those first believers. Jesus Christ's last instruction to his disciples on the day of his ascension is to quote, wait for the gift my father promised. Acts the Apostles chapter one, verse four. The instruction to wait for the Holy Spirit is so important because without the Spirit's empowering presence, it is impossible for there to be a faithful witness to Christ. We need the gift of the Spirit from the Father to be the people Christ calls us to be. The Spirit isn't for some private experience, but for the sake of our life for Christ in the world, to be Jesus in the world. Everyone, every single person, seeks some kind of meaning for their life. All of us go through life searching for something, at some point. Perhaps we long to be loved or accepted or seen for who we really are or to have another chance or whatever it is. Sometimes we yearn to understand who we are ourselves and why we're here on earth. We desire to be closer to our God and Creator, even if we aren't always aware of the desire. And we have this desire for meaning because this is how God has made us. This, and it's only God's meaning which fulfills our searching. St. Augustine famously put it, you've made us, O Lord, for yourself, and our hearts are restless until they find their rest in you. Thy Kingdom Come encourages each of us to hold five specific people in mind in these days. We pray that the gift of the Father would work through us for their sake and would also touch their own lives. 
I encourage you now to spend a few moments discerning who you might specifically pray for in these days. As we pray fervently for others to turn their hearts and minds to Christ, let us start by asking, how do we live in a way that marks us out as different? Does our witness make people curious about faith? How do I live my life differently because of the good news of Jesus Christ? How do others see and hear that? Peter speaks to real communities facing real problems, but he greets them in the confidence of God's abundant grace and peace. May you bring that grace and peace to all you meet. It's a really good challenge. Who are we going to pray for during this time of prayer? Which five are you going to pray for? Now, I'd like to hand over to Barry Hill. Barry Hill is a vicar in Leicester. He is currently in a car because he's going to a meeting in a minute, um, but we're delighted and privileged that you're joining us today. Um, Barry is on the Thy Kingdom Come board and he has some news some, of how we're slightly adapting this year from feedback that you have given us. Thank you, Barry. Well, good afternoon. Really good to be with you. Apologies for the, uh, the coming from a car, but uh, real joy to be together as it's been a joy for me uh, personally to walk with Thy Kingdom Come over uh, the last few years, see the difference that um, praying for our friends and family, our classmates and colleagues uh, makes day to day. Um, as Emma said, I lead a team of churches in Harbour in Leicestershire, uh, a mix of uh, small and large and urban and rural. And it's been one of the great joys in the time there is to see how with Christians across the denominations in Harbour, um, as people have prayed for five friends or family or classmates or colleagues, uh, to hear someone excitedly come up and say I had a good conversation with this person or this person in whatever way they asked asked me to pray for them or even they said yes to come on a, a short course about faith or wherever it may be if I'm honest I'm still praying now for the same five people that I started praying for five or six years ago uh, none of them have had a Damascus Road conversion but each of them have just started to express just a little bit more interest just a little bit more curiosity a little bit warmer response to pray so do keep on going we are very conscious at thy kingdom come quite how much is on the desk of uh, church leaders uh, across the country i feel it myself may feels months and months away and it also if i'm honest feels to me a bit like it's tomorrow um, and so we want to make it as easy as possible uh, for church leaders to engage with thy kingdom come in the way that's right for your churches um, and so this year we're doing something a little bit differently and we're very mindful may has various things in early june um, including uh, the queen's diamond jubilee and these fit together we don't want churches to have to feel it's choosing uh, one or the other um, and so um, we're encouraging every church across the country on the sunday before thy kingdom come starts so you might want to scribble that in a diary now that's sunday the 22nd of may sunday the 22nd of may the sunday before thy kingdom come starts it starts on ascension day the 26th of May, that Thursday evening, of which is 11 days then uh, of prayer. Uh, in Harbour, if I'm honest, I wouldn't say our Ascension Day service is the best attended of all of our events during the year. So in the Sunday before, uh, we're encouraging each church to engage in this short act of commissioning. And there'll be a link for this uh, in the chat in a moment, or if you're watching afterwards, it's on the Thy Kingdom Come um, website. And it's a really simple act of commissioning. It takes about five minutes. It's been designed that you could put it in a, a Eucharist or a service of the word or an all age service. I appreciate there's people of all sorts of denominations watching today. So hopefully it fits with just that to pray uh, at the beginning of thy kingdom come to encourage people to, to start right from day one on Ascension Day, not wait till the Sunday afterwards to, to gain momentum. Um, and also to give out, as you'll hear from Emma and the team later, one or, or more of the um, many free resources that are being provided to churches, to give them out, to pray, to be inspired. You may even, if it's appropriate, in Harbour we might do this, have a moment for people to download the app from the Apple Store or the Google Store there and then. So they've got the videos, they've got the prayers to hand uh, right from the outset. And the Bible readings for that day, I'm conscious we have different readings and different lectionaries and, and programmes across our churches. But in the Church of England, I think in the Methodist and Anglican Church that day, the Bible readings could not be better for the occasion. 
Um, I'll save you three sermons now on the three readings, but just to think of uh, the, five, the New Testament reading from, from Revelation. It's the image of water flowing from the throne of God. And as the river of God flows out, so the tree of, the, of life on the banks of that river and the leaves from that tree giving healing to the nations. And what better image as we start by kingdom come, particularly in the world we find ourselves in today, that as we pray and worship, so the water flowing from the throne of God, bringing life to the five people that we're praying for, and the leaves from that tree bring healing not just to them, but to the nations. So 22nd of May, pop it in the diary now, download the act of commissioning, adapt it in whatever way you want, and uh, hopefully start thy kingdom come uh, with a, a big momentum. Emma, thank you. Thank you, Barry. As Barry said, we have got lots of free resources to give away this year. We'll have resources from age three to 103. And in the next kind of 10, 15 minutes, we're going to quickly run you through what those resources are. Let me start with uh, the, the resource we have for children. Now, last year, if some of you participated, you might have heard about the Cheeky Pandas. The Cheeky Pandas is a biblically based fun series, and we're delighted we've got episode two this year, uh, series two this year not episode two sorry and we've got new episodes we're basing them on the fruit of the spirit and we're really excited so it's faithfulness joy love kindness and patience and because pentecost weekend does fall on the platinum jubilee weekend we've got a special episode which is all about as a one of the fruit of the spirit faithfulness and and a panda who wants to become queen we also have assemblies and we have activity packs as well and actually look out later on the year we even have a christmas episode now what i'd love to do now though is to share with you what the heart and the vision behind the cheeky pandas is we're going to just capture a couple of minute video with the creator pete james and the lovely kemi who you met earlier tom if you could play the vt that would be amazing thank you so um you are the creator of the cheeky pandas yeah how did the cheeky pandas come to be Yes, yeah, so Cheeky Pandas started life really as a song about the armour of God. And then uh, that song needed a music video. We shot a music video here in our town on the seafront. We had a budget of £20 wow. to make a video. <laughs> um, and the video and the song gained traction and it, we put a dance routine with it. And, and it seemed to, to be uh, you know, helpful because it, it taught kids about the armour of God directly from the Bible. And um, so I'm going to wonder, well, what's possible? Can we, can, we, can we replicate this? Can we do more songs? And, um, and one song became two, which became three. And then, um, yeah, moving forward, um, well, I began to wonder what was possible with actually making a TV series. So having made music videos, could we cross over to making a TV series and therefore ramp up the amount of content and two things were really important for me. One was it had to be entertaining, yep. it had to be really high quality. We wanted to make it as, as good as possible and to feel as familiar as possible with what children maybe see on t TV. Yep. So it had to be entertaining, but it had to be educational. And, uh, and in being educational, it had to be on point. So we wanted good content that was accurate biblically, yep. um, but that was really fun in engaging children and families. And we wanted it to be um, as accessible as possible. And so, uh, you know, how, how do we do that? Well, we've, the show has been translated to BSL. Mm -hmm. They've been translated into other languages. So we're just trying to see how far and wide we can take this. And um, really, it's been very exciting watching, watching more and more people engage and, and children and families really enjoy the material. Wherever they go, Milo, CJ, Benji, Lulu, Rory, awesome songs and Bible stories. Join in with the world of fun with the cheeky pandas, cheeky pandas. So exciting to uh, hear from Pete James about the heart behind it to encourage children in their faith to teach the Bible. But one of the most exciting things we have for Thy Kingdom to come this year is we've managed to secure some additional external funding and we are going to give away half a million, half a million Cheeky Pandas books. 
to all school children across the country, linking with the Platinum Jubilee, linking with the story about faithfulness, which is such a, a fruit of the spirit the Queen herself has presented and shown. So we're really excited about that. Later on, we'll show you how um, how we can, you can actually order that for free. It will be delivered to schools for free, for uh, churches. They can have it as part of their prayer journal and Novena pack. So we've done the, the children, which is the cheeky pandas. I'm now handing to Rachel Roberts, who will talk about the youth resource. Yeah, I'm talking to you about um, the youth resources this year for Thy Kingdom Come. We've got some incredible video content by and for young people um, from amazing groups of video content producers called The Way. This is, um, this is them here on my screen now. And as you can see, they create content that's for Christian young people to encourage them in their faith, but also really shareable content that um, Christian young people want to share with others. And um, the reason we're partnering with them is we've been really impressed by the uh, engaging content and the reach of that. And they're, do they're working on YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram. They're doing some content um, that is uh, about prayer in general. And the best way I think to show you why we think this is so great is to show you a clip. So this is just a short clip of the kind of content that they're producing for us. Has a family member or friend ever actually prayed for you? That has definitely happened before. My mum is a hardcore Christian. If they have, I don't think I know. Yes, many times. I hope so. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. So, yeah, I don't know. Do. They might have done. Not to my knowledge, but that'd be really nice. How did it make you feel? Well, I actually really like it. I think it's really wholesome, like, even if I'm not like very religious myself. It's just really nice for someone to like uh, offer their time and like their thinking space. It makes me feel seen. It makes me feel like wanted and blessed. It's always a nice thing, know. even if it's not for for a cause or yeah. a reason when i lived in france i went blind <laughs> this is so this is so weird. but That's i went sorry. i went completely blind and i remember my my family were like texting me like we're praying for you like all the time exactly and i wasn't and now i'm not blind anymore so i guess maybe it works yeah Thank you. So a little flavour, they're creating um, really engaging content that you can encourage your young people to share, to get them praying, to get them taking part in TKC this year. We've got some um, content recorded already, like that one I just showed you, and that means that we're able to create a resource for if secondary schools or youth groups want to reflect on some of the content. But we're also with the way producing some content, especially for Thy Kingdom Come, which we'll be talking about um, the gifts of the spirit and much more. We're going to have Bible reflections um, on Instagram, TikTok and longer discussions like you've just seen available on YouTube. Um, so the main uh, message from me today is um, to encourage um, you and your young people to follow, um, to follow the way today so that when thy kingdom come comes around, um, they will be getting hold of all of this um, great content. It's the same Instagram, TikTok and YouTube at The Way UK. Um, and I can't wait to hear what you all think of that content. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, um, Rachel. That's great. I think it's really exciting. Um, so now we're handing over to Chris Russell, um, who is going to talk about um, the Thy Kingdom Come Novena and Thy Kingdom Come Prayer Journal for 2022. Uh, thanks, Emma, ever so much. And um, thanks, everyone, for being here. We're really excited about this uh, next fresh year of Thy Kingdom Come and convinced and persuaded of the importance of us like concentrating our prayers during these 11 days on the, on the empowering of the spirit in our lives. There are two particular resources that I wanna talk to you about, um, which the Archbishop of Canterbury, Archbishop Justin has written uh, for thy kingdom come this year. Um, and, and these are personal resources, if you see what I mean. They're, they're for individuals, maybe groups could do them, but really they're particularly got individuals in mind. The first is a novena. Now, if that's your church tradition, you'll know about novenas, uh, nine days of concentrated prayer. Now that we're really excited about the novena. Um, the subject for this um, obviously is a prayer for the work of the spirit in our lives, and particularly through uh, the first epistle of Peter. 
Um, now, this has linked in with the Lambeth Conference, um, which is the gathering of um, Anglican bishops this summer in Canterbury. Um, and the theme for that, uh, God's Church for God's World, is going to be from 1 Peter. So it's a tie up with that, and it's a kind of an, uh, um, an, an eye to how worldwide thy kingdom come is. Um, and so this novena will have nine days of a specific prayer, drawing out some things of the work of the spirit from 1 Peter. Now we're really, really excited about this, particularly we're excited about the art. And the art has been done by an artist called Anna Heslop, and she has done these. I'll show you the whole thing, but this is the actual original. This one here, that's the Trinity, and then this is the living stones. This one's got to be really careful. And I nearly spilled some coffee on it earlier. Um, here's the living stones. Now, what, what these are, these are actually um, lino prints, which is just astonishing for me. So she's taught me through how everything, like how she made it all, um, like it, it involves her um, doing a first bit and then printing it and then taking other bits out and printing it again. So there's like often five layers of different color on each one. Now, the Navina, let me show you that. It's gonna look something fairly much like this. Um, uh, and so you'll see all of the, the resources, both this novena and also the prayer journal will say, um, will encourage everybody to be specific about five particular friends or family that they're praying for at this time. I'm like Barry, I'm still praying for my five friends that I was praying for six years ago, praying for them. We have, I've had some great conversations, but, but I've, they haven't yet come to faith. So I will be filling the five names in again here. And then here we are, day one on uh, 1 Peter 1 verses 1 and 2, um, with the image of the Trinity there. Um, here, uh, this is about the Holy Spirit coming from heaven. Uh, we've got some things about um, growing up in salvation here. Here's the living stones that I, um, uh, I showed you a moment ago. Um, so I, I think the art's just sensational. I think it's beautiful. And the idea is these, these images and these words work together for the individual to lead them in this kind of meditative prayer um, in 1 Peter um, and praying for the work of the Spirit. So that's the novena. Uh, and as well as the novena, uh, because we're aware that not everybody is used to using novenas. So it, it, as TKC has done in the past, we're also going to make available a prayer journal, again, written by Archbishop Justin. Um, now, the prayer journal is, is a little, um, uh, follows a very simple pattern. Um, again, asking people to identify five people that they can pray for, they'll pray for. And then uh, what we've done, what Justin's done with the prayer journal is he's taken uh, an image or a metaphor of the spirit um, in scripture and talked about um, that and talked about how we should be open in our lives and in our prayers for that. So there's um, a day on power, there's a day on breath, on water, and then on fire. And there's a very simple for, uh, um, kind of setting for this, a, a rhythm of it being you, you enter, you hear the word of God, you respond and you pray. And, and as well as there being some really great pictures, photographs, there's also, uh, it's a prayer journal. So there's some, some space on the right hand side to write down personal reflections. This is the prayer journal then and the novena. Um, they will be going to print really, really shortly and then they will be made available. They're gonna be free. So all we ask is that you pay package and posting. And I think that's something like you can get 50 for free for five pounds package and postage, or you can get 100 for free for seven pounds 50. And all those details, Kemi will tell us in a minute, will be available on the website. But we have around 75,000 of these to give away. We would love them all to go and to, to so they can be used. This has been one of the kind of DNAs of TKC um, that we've tried to make available these resources for free. So cost isn't anything um, of a barrier to people being involved. But we're really, really thrilled with um, uh, that Archbishop Justin has taken the time to write these. Uh, we're excited about it and we're excited to see what happens when we concentrate our prayers and the spirit comes to empower us. Thanks so much, Emma. Thanks so much, Chris. That's brilliant. I'm going to ha now hand over to Kemi. You met Kemi briefly earlier. She was praying with us and interviewing Pete and she will talk about the digital engagement. Thanks, Kemi. Hello everyone. Uh, this year we have created a fantastic range of digital resources for You For Thy Kingdom Come. So every year we have our 11 day videos and this year is no different. Um, some of the videos this year will include, um, I will call them the Monks of Murfield. Um, so it's a day in the life of one or two of the monks at Murfield Abbey talking on the practice of silence. We 
have another video from the new Methodist Youth President called Dowd Erfman, and he is going to be talking about Celebrate and how he came over from Pakistan to the UK as a child and how that's informed his faith. And interestingly, today he's actually kicking off a 160 mile journey from Cardiff, where he lives, to Wesley Chapel to raise awareness of uh, diversity, the church leadership um, across the church. So he's a really interesting and cool guy. We've also got um, a video um, coming from the three uh, three, three newly consecrated bishops in the Church of England. Uh, one is Bishop Lusa uh, Nisenga Ngoi, um, the new Bishop of Wilsdon, um, Bishop Saju Muthalali, um, the new Bishop of Loughborough, and Bishop Lynn Cullins, the new Bishop of Barking. And actually, um, we are going to show a little clip of Bishop Saju talking about Thanksgiving, which will be one of the 11-day uh, videos. I love the verse, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart, I will enter his courts with praise. And one of the callings upon my life is to become a gatekeeper, to stand by the gates and uh, open the gates for people. Um, uh, and I'm also very aware uh, how thankfulness is, uh, doesn't automatically happen to us human beings. We have to cultivate it. I've got four children and I'm still uh, cultivating uh, saying thank you uh, in their lives on a regular basis. That's true of us, isn't it? We have to cultivate a grateful heart and that means we can week out uh, to God with people uh, to say, I am thankful for even the smallest of things and sometimes very big things. As you can see, that's that snippet there from Bishop Saju. Other videos this year include a testimony, uh, testimonies on prayer from Anne Wafala Strike, MBE, Paralympian, and um, another Paralympian, Steph Reed, as well. And we've got another video, which I'm really excited about, um, which kind of encapsulates TKC and Praying for Five. Um, and it's a video about George Muller, uh, the Victorian Christian um, uh, evangelist, and missionary, and it's about his life of answered prayer. And he specifically had a very interesting story of praying for five people across his lifetime to come to know Jesus Christ. And all but one came to faith in his lifetime, and the last person came to faith at his funeral. So we'll be sharing a little bit about his prayer life um, in one of our 11 day videos. So moving on from the 11 day videos, we've got um, our new series of audio reflections and we've teamed up with 24 seven prayer again this year to produce um, 11 reflections based on Archbishop Justin's novena. And um, the reflections will be read by Archbishop Justin and a range of other voices um, from 24 seven prayer. And they'll be available on the 24 seven prayer Lectio 365 app. And they'll also be available on the TKC app as well. And as audio um, sound bites on our website. Um, they'll also be uh, audio resources for families and children as part of Lectio's uh, family app. So the Lectio 365 um, app for families too. So moving on from audio content to the TKC app, which um, is our award-winning app, which will be available in seven languages this year. All content will be made available on the app. So that includes the 11 day videos, that includes the audio reflections um, from Lectio, that includes the audio reflections for families also. It also includes um, the daily reflections and prayers um, and space to pray for your five, to write their names down and set an alarm to pray for them throughout the day. Um, and uh, leading up to Thy Kingdom Come, we're really keen to encourage and inspire churches to be involved and families and individuals. So um, we have created a bunch of resources to help churches um, get involved leading up to thy, thy Kingdom Come, which Jean will talk about. But there are two things I really want to share, uh, exciting pieces of content. The first one is a series, um, oh no, the first one is a series of videos called TKC Around the World. And we'll be hearing from different churches and church leaders in different parts of the world about how they've taken part in Thy Kingdom Come in the past and their plans for this year. And so we have some videos from <clears throat> Burundi, from Brazil, from the Netherlands and other places, which we'll be sharing across our social media platforms and which we hope will inspire and encourage churches to take part this year. Another piece of uh, content that we have leading up to Thy Kingdom Come to encourage and inspire people to pray for their five is a series called Persevering in Prayer. And we were meant to release this last year, but we didn't get around to it. We're very excited to do it this year. It will be a series of audiograms to encourage people to keep persevering in prayer. And I think Chris mentioned that he'd been praying for the same people for the last six years. And Barry also mentioned that he'd been praying for people for a couple of years as well. 
And so uh, we are going to be hearing testimonies from people who persevered in prayer um, for their loved ones to know Christ or just persevering in prayer generally, sometimes for years, sometimes for decades um, to see results, sometimes not even seeing results in their lifetime. But we just really hope that these testimonies will encourage and inspire you. Um, and I'm going to share a little video clip uh, of someone um, talking about persevering in prayer. They're actually audio testimonies, but this is a bonus con piece of content. And it's from Bishop Lusa talking about um, praying for a, a friend to come to know Christ, but also just encouraging us to just keep praying um, for people to know Jesus, even if we don't see the fruit of it straight away. So I remember when I was uh, in my last year of secondary school, my family had moved away. And so I stayed in the school I was in and boarded for, for a year. And I was praying uh, for any of my uh, fellow boarders to, to become a Christian. I was the only one, uh, the only Christian at the time. And I remember one evening, uh, one, of the, one of my friends knocked on my doors and came in, wanted to chat. And uh, when I inquired as to what the topic of, of conversation was, I said, well, I want to talk about God. Uh, and I was really taken aback, uh, really surprised. We chatted and then for the following weeks, we carried on talking a bit uh, about God. Then the year came to an end. And about a couple of years later, I was in a Christian gathering uh, and I bumped into him. I was really surprised to see him there uh, and inquired as to what took him there. And he said, well, I've become a Christian. He was really excited and told me the story of his journey uh, into committing his life to, to Christ. And for me, uh, it was really um, a humbling experience, but also an encouragement to know that actually our prayers are bear fruit. And we may not always be there to see the impact of our prayers, uh, but actually, we need to carry on persevering in holding uh, people before God. And God will find uh, his way into their hearts, into their lives. And so if you're praying for anyone, I would encourage you to keep doing that. Uh, and remembering that actually it's not about cutting the deal. It's simply about journeying with people and offering something of what God has given you in that moment. So all our resources will be available on the Thy Kingdom Come website, um, the Novena, digital copy of the Novena, digital copy of the prayer journal, um, links to the videos, link to the links to the audio reflections, links to the social media graphics or the daily prayer reflections. They will all be available on the website over the coming weeks and months. Um, you can also order the print resources from our TKC website, uh, which is thykingdomcome.global. And if you sign up to our MailChimp, you'll get updates about when the resources are available. And if you follow us on social media, you'll also be able to um, know when the resources are available. Emma. Thank you so much, Kemi. And what an encouraging story from Bishop Lusa. So just really quickly, before we go on to the international piece and to ideas for your churches, I'll just quickly share my screen with you all, it's just to show you the Thy Kingdom Come website. We've tried to make it as easy as and accessible as possible for everyone. So you go to the Thy Kingdom Come, this is the homepage. Um, oops, I'm moving the map. Um, and here, the first thing you'll see is order free resources for your church or order the Cheeky Pandas book for your school. Now, when you click on here, they order your free resources for your church. Um, it takes you to here and it actually, you get, you could get, if you would like it, 50 copies of the Novena, 50 copies of the Prayer Journal and 50 copies of the, uh, the Cheeky Panda storybook, all just for five pounds. And that's just paying for the postage and packaging. And as you go up, you've got different options. Um, I'm just going to have to go back a second. Oh, dear me, this is complicated. Uh, here we go, just because the top of the Zoom. And then if you go down here, though, if you'd like to have just copies of the commissioning or if you'd like to have copies of the digital copies of the Prayer General Novena, they're just here. So easy. There's also a contact us part of the website. Now, uh, it's my great joy to hand it over to my colleague, Bob Key, who will talk a bit more about the international side of Thy Kingdom Come. Emma, thank you very much indeed. And I just want to introduce you to a few friends of mine uh, around the world that I've met through Thy Kingdom Come and say a little bit about what they've done to make Thy Kingdom Come their own. Because of course, this isn't simply a kind of uh, English, this is what you must do offering to the world, but rather a gift to say, this is how you might make it your own. And you can decide what you want to do to make thy kingdom come your own. So let me introduce you to a friend of mine, Francisco. 
Francisco used to be an Archbishop of Brazil because they rotate who gets that job, and he's Bishop of Southwestern Brazil. He's been an excited and exciting uh, ambassador for Thy Kingdom Come for several years. And last year, and again this year, he's translated the Novena into Portuguese uh, with that South American slant so that we can use it right across the Portuguese speaking world. In addition to all the things that we put out, last year he did his own daily podcasts so that people weren't getting something simply written by folks the other side of the world, but something from one of their own leaders that made it earthed in the battles, struggles, joys and celebrations of what it means to be Brazilian today. And then let's just cross the world a bit and I'll take you to my friend Lyndon. Lyndon is Archdeacon in the Maori Church in New Zealand. And he said to me, Bob, if you want to get through to uh, New Zealanders, no matter what their background, it's really important you take the indigenous culture seriously. So even though there may only be, his estimate was 300 Maori who can't read and speak English, we've got to have it in Tare, the Maori language. And so together with one of their lovely Maori bishops, whose crest is just across the room from me in my Somerset study, Bishop Quito, they translate the materials into Maori. And that means then that it can truly be uh, an adventure in prayer, evangelistic missional prayer for the church in Aotearoa, New Zealand and Polynesia. And this morning, I got back from Rome at the end of the last week where I've been having meetings with uh, folks in the Vatican and lovely quote from one of their cardinals who said evangelization it's a conversation about Jesus. That's great for those of us who feel we may not have much in the way of uh, great technical theological answers but we can talk about Jesus our friend and our Lord and come back this morning to my desk and there is an email from Bartholomew. Bartholomew is a priest in Hong Kong, Macau. And he said, have you got the Archbishop's Novena yet? We are desperate to get it translated into Chinese so that we can share it here on the ground. These are all people who are making thy kingdom come their own. And I could go on. Uh, Bangladesh want it not simply in English, which people who've been to university understand, but in Bangla, the ordinary language of the people. And if you're in the Diocese of Rutana in rural Burundi, then because the internet isn't particularly strong, they do something that we would have understood here in England years ago. It's written into the old Book of Common Prayer of Thomas Cranmer, that the minister was to ring the church bell and call people to pray. And in Burundi this year again, there'll be churches ringing the church bell every evening and calling people together to pray, come Holy Spirit, over their five friends, their community and their country. So wherever you're watching this uh, webinar, uh, whether you're in, uh, in Newcastle, or New Key, or the other side of the world. Make thy kingdom come your own. And however you join in, join in. Emma, back to you. Thank you, Bob. And now we hand over to Jean, who will talk about how ways uh, in which your church or your churches can get involved. Thank you, Emma. Well, you've heard about the wonderful resources, you've heard the amazing stories from across the world, and I bet you sat right on the edge of your seat waiting for the Cheeky Panda episodes to come along. And you know, in these times, particularly when we've thought about Ukraine, it's reinforcing me that actually there's one thing that nobody can rob us of, and that is the power of prayer. And so today I want to simply uh, humbly offer you three words, really under the title of Inspire, because I believe everybody on this webinar is called to inspire their local church people uh, to be praying for five. 
So first of all, inspire your people by equipping them with a resource that's suitable for you, whichever one it is. But more than that, inspire them and equip them by using the same resource alongside them. Why not set up that time when you're going to use the novena or the prayer journal and invite a couple of other people to join you as well? But also inspire them by equipping them with prayer stories. Now, every church that I've ever served in has had prayer stories. The difficulty is we rarely ask to hear them, but every church has them. The other day in one of my congregations here in Deal, I said to my friend Mary, Mary, has there been a time when you've had to just keep going in prayer? And this is the story she told me. Mary was a teacher. And she said, uh, as she was teaching, a parent approached her and said, uh, I know you're a Christian. Do you think you could pray for my daughter? Because every Monday we have tears. She doesn't want to go to school. The girl was year seven by then. So in that transition period for secondary school, she wouldn't tell her mother what the problem was, uh, but she just was finding it really hard to go to school. Well, my friend Mary found out eventually that this girl, let's call her Beth, was being bullied. And uh, she wouldn't tell her teacher what was wrong. She wouldn't name anybody. And this girl suffered right the way through uh, her school life. Occasionally, she would go and see Mary at break time to try and keep out of trouble. But she would never, ever, ever tell her who it was. And Mary, her teacher, would pray for her daily. She, every time the child was in her class, she would stand behind her chair and ask God to bless her and keep her strong. But the situation continued. In years 10 and 11, Beth came to take RE with Mary. And so she saw a bit more of her. And then the week before the GCSE exams, uh, the pupils were allowed to sit anywhere in the classroom. So Mary told me that what she did before the class came in was she went and stood behind every chair and prayed God's blessing on every single pupil that would come in. She got to one chair, she told me, where actually she found herself unable to move. She just stayed there, continually praising God, continually praying in tongues for whoever the young person was going to be that would come into this chair. The class comes in, they sit down. And she said to the class, as she always did for the last uh, lesson before the exam, I'd like you to say something good about the person next to you. Guess who was sitting next to Beth? But a girl who had been bullying her. This girl started to talk and she burst into tears and said to Beth, I'm really sorry for what I've done to you over all these years. I didn't have the love in my home that you had and nobody cared for me. Wasn't that remarkable? A few years later, Beth spoke to Mary again and said that she'd invited her now friend to church and they were still going together. And Mary looked me in the eye and she said, I am so glad I didn't stop praying for Beth. There will be loads of stories like that in your church. So I you know, really inspire you to equip people by getting those stories out. I want you to inspire your people as well, may I offer, by holding out a challenge, a challenge to a regular time that you decide as a group when you will be pausing and praying for your five people. You don't have to be in the same room. You can be anywhere that you like. But also, not everybody uses words in their prayers. And as we've gone around the United Kingdom, We've been really encouraged to see how people have used prayer stations, creative activities for their prayers. And so why not use your prayer stations as soon as you can now during your intercessions, your ordinary Sunday services, your midweek services. And please, please, will you use the grounds around your church buildings over the time of thy kingdom come? You never will really know who is walking through your churchyard or around your building. You never will really know about those kids who gather outside of your church building. You never know who might stop and pray and what seeds you're actually planting by simply taking your prayer stations outside of your church. 
And then there's another inspiration for you, another challenge. This year, we're going to have the postcard project. One, you are asked to pray for five neighbours and to deliver a simple postcard to them. It's all right, you haven't got to collect them. You haven't got even to talk with them. You just put the postcard through the door. On that postcard, it will simply say, your church is really keen to pray for you. Is there anything we can pray for? You? And then there is an instruction for them to take the card, perhaps to leave it in a box near the church or somewhere suitable in your locality. And backing that up, there's a helpful document on how you might set that up as well. And I think it's a natural extension of that extra neighbourliness that we saw during the first net, uh, lockdown. But also the invitation is to inspire people by inviting them to grow healthy habits of prayer. Now you can do the easy one and say, let's pray at breakfast, at lunch, at supper time, or before we go to bed or when we get up. But I think now there's a challenge because we are created by a creator God. There is a challenge for us to find ourselves creative ways in which we can find prompts to help people to pray. And it's really good, I think, to say to our congregations, what would help you to help you to remember to pray? And why not run a social media competition and see what things they come up with? Well, I was sitting with my grandchildren the other day and they love the cheeky pandas. And one of them sent it to their be the leader because he's in intensive care in King's Hospital. And he sent the cheeky panda with a little prayer book tapped in the back and said, please give this to Dell. It will really help him while he's poorly. So I started thinking, how can I help my grandchildren to have a healthy habit of pray? I don't know what you think about this. I've gathered some fruit and vegetables. First of all, I'll be taking them this grapefruit and I'll be saying to them, can you think of anybody that you find it a bit hard to get on with? They make you go, they're a bit sharp or they're a bit difficult to get on with. Well, could you pray for them to come to know the love of God for themselves? And then I've got for them an onion. Now, I don't know about you, but when I peel onions, I cry a lot. So I'll be saying to them, is there somebody you know whose situation makes you want to cry for them? It might be somebody who's ill or somebody who's having a really tough time. Every time you see that onion, could you remember to pray for them to come to know the love of God for themselves? And then I've got the strawberries. Yes, I know they are out of season, aren't they? But is there somebody in your gathering, your community, who is just so sweet, so lovely, you really get on well with them, but they don't know Jesus yet and don't know about the love of God. Could you bring them to God in prayer that they too might know his love for themselves? And then I've got my bunch of grapes. Now, grapes are wonderful and they're really shiny, these, because they're fresh. But, you know, if you leave them on the windowsill for a bit, they start to um, lose their bloom and they shrivel up a little bit. But they still taste wonderful. And actually, they can be used for so many things. And so I'm asking, do you know of any older people who still do not know the love of God for themselves? Because there are millions of them still in this country. Might there be an older person you will pray for? And then finally in my five, I've got the old potato, the trusty potato, the everyday vegetable. Can be used for all sorts of things. So is there somebody who's around you most days, but they still do not know the love of God? Can you, can you pray for them that they too might know God's love for themselves? So perhaps your church could run a challenge to find the most inventive ways of prompting prayer. But in all this, know that we at Thy Kingdom Come are praying for you. We're praying for you. And we will continue to pray for you. Oh, and by the way, if you happen to be around Scotland or Edinburgh around the 22nd of May, well, I'll be up there. And perhaps if you've got time, I could pop in and share some prayer ideas or prayer stations or lead a little prayer group for you as well. 
So our real challenge today is to inspire people, inspire by equipping, by holding out a challenge, and by inviting people to grow into healthy habits of prayer. Thanks, Emma. Thank you, Jean. That's quite a good challenge, actually. Um, I'm going to take that away and especially think about taking the analogies of the different fruits and identifying the people in my life so that I could be praying for. Um, now, Tom is going to lead us and all the other panellists um, in the question and answer time. And we'll try and get through as many Q&As as possible. Um, and anyone else on the team, if you've got, if you want to answer, just put your hand up. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, uh, we've got hundreds and hundreds of people on today's webinar, and uh, it really has been uh, fantastic. Weren't some of those stories uh, that uh, that Jean was sharing incredible, and also the the video that Rachel showed us uh, just uh, real goosebumps moments. I think in in those uh, in those. So uh, we're getting a lot of questions from those who are wor uh, working internationally about uh, whether we can post or ship uh, any of those resources, the non-digital resources, um, uh, internationally. Are you able to uh, give us some direction on that, please? Um, I'll answer that one quickly, if that's OK. Yep, absolutely. Um... PMP will be a bit well the po the package the packaging will be the same but the postage will be a bit more expensive if you email us there's the um, emails on the website I'll try and get it in the chat in a minute um, just email us with what you want we will work with you to make that as cost effective as possible but we would be delighted we'll also give you InDesign files if you want if you're the diocese and you want to print it in your own country and Bob do you want to just quickly say something about the international translations while we're on that uh, yeah, <clears throat> so far we've got, if I can remember them all, uh, Finnish, Welsh, uh, Maori, Bangla, uh, Spanish, Portuguese, uh, French is on its way. Um, uh, there are lots of things going to be out there. The, the digital platforms work simply because it's, it keeps costs down. And uh, I'm finding on my travels that folks, uh, even in places that I might naughtily think of as the middle of nowhere very often actually it's the mobile phone um, that gives them connectivity with the rest of the world wonderful um we, we're getting a lot of love for things like uh the materials for the nine days they look fantastic um possibly even too much to fit into nine days can you offer any tips of how we might be able to kind of maximise and extend beyond those nine days? Chris, do you want to answer that? Yeah, thanks, Emma. Thanks, Tom. I've, I've not thought of that, actually, because um, we, we do try and be quite specific and concentrated in the resources that we produce for like for these 11 days. And I know uh, Naveen are obviously only is nine days. Um, but I guess, you know, I, I mean, I still go back to some of the, the things that we've produced in the past um, and some of the, you know, the liturgies and prayer journals and those kind of things. So I guess this is one of the things that we want to do, I suppose, is like we offer it, offer things open handedly and we say, look, you know, make of them what, what you will and use them in the best way that you see appropriate. That's wonderful. Thank you. Um, Jean, your diary is being filled up for you uh, ever since you offered yourself. And in fact, I was I was very jealous that you were going up that far north. Do stop by as you come past Belper in Derbyshire, won't you? Um, but uh, I will. Uh, lots of people are, are giving email addresses and contact details. What we'll do is we'll get those sent across to to Jean to be able to respond to you uh, individually. Um, and uh, and and uh, as I say, Jean, you're going to have a very busy time. Um, can I just also say we could also do lo more localised Zooms like we did last year. So, uh, yeah, fill up the diary. Be great. That would be fantastic. That'd be fantastic. I think, uh, Tom just said that it, it, I, I was doing I was due before COVID struck to be doing training conferences in uh, Korea and elsewhere. God willing, I'm going to celebrate Pentecost with the people in Trinidad. But um, I did find myself in, uh, not for thy kingdom come, sadly, but in August in India, uh, in Somerset, preaching to 2,000 people in India. So it's very easy to set up an international training thing uh, and run it from here on the wonderful delights of Zoom. So um, if folks want to take advantage of that, it's no problem. 
I, I can vouch for that. I've worked with you and Jean on one of the, uh, a couple of the international ones, and they were fantastic, really great. Um, Chris, uh, the artwork uh, that you showed us uh, was was stunning. Um, is any of that artwork available to purchase or download as posters and those sorts of things at all? Well, that is a very, very good question because um, I think it's really, you know, it is stunning. It is absolutely Incredible. stunning. And the fact that she's done them by um, lino prints, I mean, in some ways they, they, they don't look like any lino prints I've ever seen. Um, and so um, I, let, can we see what we can do on that? That'd be lovely. Oh, hold on, Emma's already decided. <laughs> um yes um yeah of course so they can be used as prayer stations in your church so what we're hoping to do with cpo is to get big a3 versions put up and the writing the reflections from archbishop justin it becomes a really beautiful reflective easy way to do prayer stations you just put them around the church they're stunning pieces of work they're done prayerfully they're related to the bible scripture it enriches you as you as you meditate on them and you meditate on the scripture and you hear what god might be saying to you so yes absolutely again just email us the thing about our team and this is really true is we our whole like raison d'etre the whole thing we want to do is resource the church and we will do whatever anyone wants so just ask us and we'll come back to you go on chris was that your hand up again we're not a school no, 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 not at all. Otherwise, I was just going to say to Bob that I was available for the Trinidad trip if he needed anyone. To <laughs> was I? <laughs> right, we'll get on to ticketing for that now. Um, so <laughs> that's fantastic. Uh, I'm very conscious of time. So um, I want to, uh, um, obviously, we want to, to close with some prayer. But my last question is a very practical one that a lot of folks have, have asked, which is around uh, the release of the Cheeky Pandas videos and that coinciding potentially with, as you mentioned, Jubilee, but also half terms, etc. So are you able to offer any reassurance of when they might be available? Yeah, they're in train at the moment. Um, we're really, really truly excited about um, this and the assembly packs that go alongside and the activity packs that go alongside. Um, and the book, which goes alongside, um, we're hoping to be able to deliver the books um, but around Easter, just before Easter. So this isn't until May. So we're talking, you know, a good six weeks before um, we're hoping to, be able to deliver them. Um, all the resources will be available and ready. And with actually going early this year for Thy Kingdom Come, it does give the week before mm -hmm. half term as well. But the resources we know are used again, especially the video resources and the songs and the all the actions, etc., are used in assemblies, in children's groups, in Sunday schools, in toddler groups across the year. Um, but please do, as I say, if you would like any more specific information about Cheeky Pandas, we partner with Swell Revolution on it. Go onto the cheekypandas.com site um, and you'll be able to sign up there for their own newsletter as well. And they can then email you directly. But any questions again, just email us. We'll come back to you as soon as possible. Can I just mention also, Tom, that um, we're going to make those resources suitable for children with additional needs as well, like we did last year. And uh, so we'll get that done as soon as we've finished the uh, final run of print. So that will be up on the website as well. That's fantastic. Well, look, um, there are so many more questions and uh, they don't disappear once uh, we close the webinar. Uh, they're stored and we can make those available to Emma and the team um, so that they can either uh, resource or answer or uh, signpost as, as required. But um, Emma, I think you're going to uh, close us uh, in, in prayer. So uh, I think I'll say uh, goodbye at this point. Thank you, Tom. And thank you, everyone, for coming today. Um, it's been a privilege and a joy to share with you. Um, Tom, if we can share on screen the prayer written by Archbishop Justin and Archbishop Stephen. A prayer for Ukraine. Please join me in praying. God of peace and justice, we pray for the people of Ukraine today. We pray for peace and the laying down of weapons. We pray for all those who fear for tomorrow, that your spirit of comfort would draw near to them. We pray for those with power over war or peace, for wisdom, discernment and compassion to guide their decisions. Above all, we pray for all your precious children at risk and in fear, that you would hold them and protect them. We pray this in the name of Jesus, the Prince of Peace. 
Amen. As I said, thank you so much for coming today. Um, and I, I, I think most people are aware, but um, Pope Francis on Wednesday has called for a day of prayer and fasting. Uh, for the situation in the world, I will be joining with that. And I think if you look online, you'll find resources for that um, yourself as well. Anyway, take care. God bless and thank you.